So my name is Robert Heyman. I ran a company called Discus Dental. We started, uh, and after about 15 years, we were the number one direct manufacturing company in the industry. We had a tremendous success. Uh, we were creative, we had amazing culture, uh, great leadership, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. Humor was a big part of our culture. Uh, this right here, we were a whitening juggernaut more than anything else, but this one product here was representative of probably over 50% of whitening revenues in the entire industry globally. Uh, this is called Z uh, Zoom, light activated chair side tooth whitening, uh, really uh, a fantastic product. This is Bright Smile. We essentially acquired Bright Smile after we put them out of business, got their assets, got their patents and everything else. So that was interesting. And I worked on Invisalign as well. When Align Technologies launched, they launched the Orthos, asked us for help with the GPs. We helped them out a great deal and we really knocked the cover off the ball. Strategically, completely different. Uh, and the way that we handle everything is very different from, from Orthos, but it was really a lot of fun. I'm happy to have it. Very, very deep bench of experience here. These guys have all done it before. They all have experience in the dental industry. Some have a lot of experience in the dental industry, but all of them are very, very capable. I'm very blessed to have a terrific team. So why we're here today is the interview system. And interview uh, is, is a very big statement here. This will become the number one diagnostic in our industry, and I'll explain why. It's an audacious statement, but I'll explain why, and I think you'll actually agree with me when it's done. It'll be used by every dentist, every specialty, in most procedures. It is quick, it's non-invasive, there's no pain, and there's no radiation. And when I say quick, it's two seconds per tooth and literally 60 seconds for the entire oral cavity. Uh, this will become a new standard of care very quickly. So what does it do exactly? Well, it identifies or detects damage. And by damage, what we mean are cracks and failing restorations. And by restorations, we're talking about crowns, veneers, fillings, or what a lot of uh, uh, people call cavities, uh, inlays and onlays, and those are all the restorations. So what about x-rays? People ask about, well, don't they detect cracks? Well, here's a tooth. It's an endodontically treated tooth. It's a molar, uh, and it's an x-ray. Well, look what the x-ray did not pick up. And that's because X radiographs primarily detect decay and some bone-related issues, but not damage which is again, cracks and failing restorations. And damage is a far bigger problem. This is why the statement, the audacious statement, this will become the number one diagnostic, which is now radiographs. Because damage is three to four times more common, more prevalent than decay or bone related issues. So 80% of patients are leaving their dental exams with some form of tooth damage. And you know, these are oftentimes cracks and they usually start out small, but they never really heal without some form of intervention. Think about your windshield. Who hasn't gotten a small crack on your windshield, but it goes all the way across and sooner or later you have to replace the windshield. Nothing today exists that accurately and consistently detects it. This is easily dentistry's number one unmet diagnostic need. So today's number one diagnostic for damage, pain. And that's not funny, dentists hate this. These are valuable procedures walking out of the door. Many are urgent, and some are going to become catastrophic by catastrophic guts and extraction. Dentists are essentially today, in this regards, flying blind. So for the first time ever, clinicians, and this is dentists and hygienists, are going to get ass assessment percentage probabilities on failing restorations, all four of the different crack types. We can identify now damaged PDL, specifically a damaged PDL, which is huge and all three of the different mobility types. What we do is predictive analysis, and yes, we can identify a static snapshot in time, patient comes in, this tooth is hurting, and we can tell them what's wrong. Often, a lot of times, it's not the tooth they're pointing at, it's the adjacent dentition and the opposing dentition. Within two seconds per tooth, we can interview each tooth, and uh, how many of you have heard, uh, let's just watch that, because they don't know what's wrong with it. They can't tell you if it's a crack. More important is the dynamic health, health history trend line. This happens mostly in the hygiene room. They get the first uh, uh, reading right here. It's a 20, it's low. And they, after, at every hygiene appointment, it goes up if, it's, if there's a problem. And this becomes, gets to a point where it could become catastrophic. And at some point, you want to have some inter intervention. So for the first time ever, a clinician and a patient are going to determine when is the appropriate time to intervene and what to do about it. 
So 90% of GPs, this was a market research study that we did, a uh, validation study when we started the project, 90% of GPs would use the technology, uh, uh, believe that integrating interview into their practices, into their exams would generate significant revenue. That's important. 100% of GPs and hygienists would use the technology if it took three minutes or less. We're down to 60 seconds now, and I think it'll get even quicker. 78%, almost 80% would use, would purchase the this, this system if the handpiece was under $1,500. We're there. So how does it work? It's called percussion, quantitative percussion diagnostics, or QPD for short. It's like tapping a glass. Glass has, uh, it's, it's healthy, it has water in it, sounds one way. If it has a crack in it, it sounds completely different. We pick up the, those, uh, uh, we pick up those, those, uh, that energy wave and it goes up into the cloud, into our algorithms, comes back almost real time on the screen into the, the, the image that I just showed you for the UI. So how big is the market? 400,000 dentists and hygienists in the United States alone. It's split e fairly evenly between the two. There's 800 million plus procedures in just the U.S. That's a $5.6 billion total addressable market. That's massive in our industry. Globally, it's 14 billion plus in total addressable market revenue. Artificial intelligence, we have the largest data uh, uh, collection in, in the world, one million and counting. We use finite element analysis modeling to train the algorithms. It's a supercomputer and also replica teeth. This is a sinusoidal wave. We now can uh, use and read various aspects of the, of the tooth, the different parts of the wave, and we're beginning to be able to distinguish different types of cracks. So we can uh, detect PDL health, diagnostics with percentiles, and now we're going to be distinguishing uh, versus just detecting cracks. So the revenue model, we're a razor, razor blade SaaS model. Uh, our razor and our razor blade are all profitable, 80% gross margin on, on that, and the, of course the SaaS is 100%. Intellectual property, we have, uh, uh, we have 21 patents, uh, all global and uh, some pending. We received one, uh, the second FDA 510K approval in September. That was for the system and mobility. We're, we've applied for the second one. We're hoping to have approval any time now. Could be any day. 28 clinical studies, most of these peer reviewed, and also uh, published in our, the most prestigious journal in our industry, which is JPD. Mo many of them on the front cover. I already spoke to the 21 patents. So financially speaking, uh, this is very hard for you to see. Uh, we grow from a revenue of, you know, first year, 13 million, uh, and year number four, it, uh, num number five, it goes down to 100 and, what is that, 337 million. And so uh, we, we feel this is very conservative. It's not a huge market share. It's less than 5% globally. And so we have a lot more. In the, my history, having developed and launched 35 successful brands, all different types, whether it's products, whether it's technologies, whether it's medical technologies, devices, we beat the hell out of this, quite frankly. This is the revenue by product. It's just an interesting chart. That's total revenue in green. That's the, hand, that's the uh, disposable tip, and that's the SAS fees. And then you can see there's a convergence here between the tip and the, re and the uh, SAS fee over a period of time. Fundraising update, we're raising $10 million some point in Q2, uh, and we've already got some of it. Uh, we've got a lot of commitments coming in. Uh, and it's really to fund the launch. That's my contact info. So you got five seconds to ask questions now. If you have any questions, just take a picture of this and I'm happy to answer the questions for you.